Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and this is a sponsor video before we begin. I usually pick these things depending on how interested I am on the topic and if they sort of jive with the content I want to make. But up until this point, I have to legally disclaim that by the way, I have been in love with hacking consoles, portable game systems, and I made several videos on it, you know, hacking PS Vitas, all that good stuff, switches, and I've really relied on them to provide me entertainment and increase the viability and all the diversity of what I can play on my devices that I purchase. This one, on the other hand, is the Game Shell, a retro pie based, uh, well, a, a Game Shell pie based, their own OS, uh, a, a handheld game console that looks like a Game Boy Color at first glance, but one that's capable of running multiple emulators, homebrew software, literally runs on Debian ARM Linux. So, without a doubt, it intrigued me, right, to build the own console, build, build my own system from scratch. Um, scratch and then be able to run whatever I want onto it without needing to sort of hack somebody's licensed game console. So I don't need a PS Vita at a certain firmware. I don't need a Switch with a boot ROM exploit that NVIDIA left in. I can actually just straight up do what I want right from the device within. And are there multiple devices you can do it with? Can you buy something pre-made? For sure, you absolutely can. But I guess the idea of building it and, you know, the idea of this intrigues me. So let's open this up and look at it real quick. All right, so we're gonna, oh, it's got the, it's got the packaging to really show for it. So it's got, 3D printed, uh, yeah, these these uh, these little exterior game shells, so to speak, right? It's got red, yellow, all right, but unfortunately, it's got no purple, so I don't really get that. I don't really get that purple. You know, my original Game Boy Color was purple, dude. I remember playing tons of Pokemans on that shit. They've got what appears to be, uh, I believe, yeah, these are the LED covers over here, so they got little translucent. Uh, showcases so you can see all the stuff internally which again is pretty cool you know you see a lot of people doing hacks with that you've got instructions now let me read these real quick do they come in the uh oh it's like ikea instructions man all right there you go you got you got multiple little instructions tossed in you, you get to work with the screen the main board keypad battery all that good stuff so i guess oh it even extends brother oh my god it goes everywhere jesus christ speakers and everything so I guess we'll follow the assembly guide. I'll put that over here and put that uh, and, and build the Lego together. It's like building Lego, dude. It's like Lego, man. Me, I used to use Lego. My brother had Mega Blocks, and the whole world worked, dude. Oh man. So these these are the magic things. So they got individual boxed uh, <laughs> uh, equipment pieces. So you've got your. If I can, they don't even have any labels on this, do they? But it just says highly hackable open source equipment. So around five of these, and I believe two of them are just straight up development boards. I'm not sure, but they've got multiple stacks of this stuff. So let's uh, let's put away the box for a second and actually build this real quick. So number one, it's got a lot of crazy good packaging, man. I'll tell you that much. I'm a, I'm a sucker for good packaging. Let me tell you, if you package your stuff good, I'll probably say something nice about it. And over here, we have what appears to be batteries. Uh, connection to battery, okay, rechargeable batteries. All right, so this is the battery case. We don't need to worry about this yet, so I'm gonna put that away, and we'll deal with something else real quick. Um, what is this over here? Oh, got it. Man, it, it all is so packaged well. I think this is actually a complete development board right over here. So you actually have, if I can mistake it right here real quick, you got what appears to be the screen, if I'm not mistaken. It's all in these anti-static bags, so it is packaged really well. It, it is definitely secured properly. It's not like you're getting what I believe to be a super cheap... I mean, it's not a cheap product at all. It's up there in the $199 category, so you expect to have this kind of stuff to begin with. Uh, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to build this real quick. I, I don't think showing you all the parts is necessarily what we have to. So I'm going to build this real quick and show you guys the finished product real quick. So we just finished building the game shell, all right? This is not the easiest, well, it is actually the easiest system to really go and build. So first things first, uh, this is the build product right here. So you got, you know, your motherboard in the back, if you can see. You've got batteries, the keypad is right over here, and the screen is right over here. So you kind of sort of stack them on each other. You place them into the grooves, uh, and that's really about it. You, you clamp it together, and it's done. Now, you can actually replace the face plates if you want with these uh, Pokemon Yellow-themed ones, which I'm probably going to do later. I can't show you gameplay of Pokemon Yellow. Nintendo would love to, to ream if possible. And you've got the sort of original uh, Game Boy style, uh, where they have sort of the uh, plastic that almost deteriorates over time. 
I don't know if this is going to deteriorate over time. I hope not. I hope it's just some color style. I uh, would not want to put that one on even for nostalgia's sake. Let's be real, folks. Let's not do it. I'm sure you can pl uh, place stickers all over your device, but it's fine. I like this transparent see-through design. I mean, you know, you see a lot of people modding their, their, their game systems with the transparent designs anyway, so I'm glad they actually thought forward and did it. But it's not just about that. It's about uh, adding one more thing to it, which is a light RGB kit. So we're going to do that real quick, attach it on, and see how it goes. You do it once, and then you're done. All right, so this is what it looks like, you know, when you open it up real quick. So if you like start to dig down here, all right, you can see that right there, that's where the motherboard is powering. Uh, under this motherfucker, <laughs> that's the battery. This is our keypad and that that's the screen. So obviously when you, when you jam it in together, hopefully it should, it should work. But the reason why we're not doing the lighting kit is, all right, this is gonna shock you real quick. This is quite possibly, the iffiest design I have seen. So this is where the light kit works, right? So you see it's powered in uh, to the actual like uh, keypad itself. So if you want to, let's just brighten the system up real quick. You can press these and the light keys are aligned in such a way where you have to hold the device like this. And so you have this like little bookshelf design where you're pressing these buttons and these are your light keys. Um, I, I guess those are to save your state or maybe give you an extra button. Like maybe if you're playing like some PS1 game or something, but for me, that's, uh, I, I, I don't know, like, you, you see what I mean? Like, if you put this into your pocket, you have this weird tumor kind of sticking out. So we're not, we're not going to do this, okay? Plus, it looks like a mega block design on the back, and I'm not really feeling that. So, yeah, we're, we're not going to go with the Razer add-on. <laughs> we're just going to go basic, all right? So let, let's, let's... So here is Castlevania, and one thing I got to say is the device is kind of feeling a little hot back there but it's not that big of a deal. Now, one thing I'll say about this, the screen is really nice. There is one glaring issue I'm having here though, and that is due to the fact that because the screen is really tiny, there is a slight cutoff at the top and bottom, and that's because of the way GBA games have their aspect ratio. There is definitely an issue that I'm finding over here. Um, it's not bad. I mean, if I was playing this without it being far away from me on the camera, I wouldn't have too much of an issue. It's just, it definitely does stick out. The screen is small, but I guess that's sort of the appeal for that classic charm, right? It's also lower resolution than what you may be used to, so you gotta keep that in mind. And uh, there is some slowdown and there is screen tearing. Like screen tearing is across the board here. You're definitely seeing points where the screen is being torn and when there's a lot going on, there is a definite slowdown. And again, that has to do more with the fact that this isn't properly optimized software that's built into the device. You have to go out of your way to do it. And uh, once that's done, apparently in the community's eyes, it works pretty well. And I, I, I gotta say, if that's the case, man, I am all keen on for it, so. Yeah, it's Castlevania, uh, the Game Boy Advance version, and it looks just fine. Uh, it plays kind of fine, I would say. Uh, you know, aside from the slowdowns, I'm actually quite enjoying this. And I can definitely see myself playing some Game Boy Advance games this way, and especially Game Boy Color, um, because that's usually what I kind of mostly play uh, if I'm on an emulated system. And I'm really failing right now. It's hard to record these from like a distance away. <laughs> so it's in front of the camera. It also has micro HDMI out. I haven't toyed with it yet because I just do not have that specific, that specific mini HDMI cable out. I have it for cameras, but not for this. If it had it for that, I would be fine. Yeah, here's where you can see like definite slowdown. So yeah, you can probably hear it in the audio if you listen real close. So here is the PS1 emulator, and to handle anyone on the PS1 emulator side, I've decided to install one of my favorite PS1 games ever, Tomba 2. And this is the really weird part, and this is why I believe all the other stuff we've seen is purely a software problem. So this is a PS1 game, which does require substantially more CPU and GPU to run. And from an audio perspective, it is a good sounding game. It works just fine. There is no audio issues over here. The game plays just perfectly. I mean, and th this isn't exactly, you know, a undemanding game for the PlayStation 1 either. This is one of the prettiest games on a PlayStation 1 level from a technical point of view. So for this to run as flawlessly as it is, it... It, it, it shows that there definitely is a software thing. So, because there's no way a device with the specs that this is carrying can run SNES games and 
and uh, Game Boy Game Boy Advance Game Boy Color games improperly when you had that stuff running even better on like a basic PSP which you know I'm not going to scoff at but the basic PSP is the basic PSP like if the PSP Go is able to emulate GBA and some SNES pretty well better than what this device is doing it's clearly a software issue not the hardware and at that point as long as you build yourself a more up-to-date retro arc you should be fine in my opinion i don't foresee that being an actual issue so while there is no element of l1 r1 you can see in the back that these become the l1 r1 l2 r2 and they light up as accordance to being touched which is kind of a cool effect but ultimately beyond that, it adds extra stuff, extra controls to the game, which might not be ergonomic, but for the games that I play, I definitely need. I hope at some point, because of the modular design, I can definitely, definitely go and change up things as I want later on. Probably a more ergonomic, more better design, because when you lay this down flat, all right, it, it, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of weird. Now, conclusion of this video, ladies and gentlemen. While there's a part of me that would definitely be all for it, I'm going to give you the straight honest facts of what I think about it. While this is a sponsored video, I definitely, definitely anytime I take these sponsorships, I make it well known that I'm going to offer true opinions, and this is my opinion. Now, for the price that they're offering it at when you go to their website, I've seen it, at least on my side, to be $199, you know, the $150 range, which to me I find a little too pricey for a product like this. You know, especially when there are products that come from GPD that are, uh, I would argue, of a more user-friendly variety. I would say that much. You know, there are devices that come pre-packaged with the same kind of stuff this is offering in a slightly better form factor. But at the same time, I feel like I'm doing an injustice when I say that. Because for me, when I truly find the value of this, because there is inherently a value, while I did say it's pricey, I still think that there is merit in buying one of these. Because I compare it to sort of like console and PC gaming. While I'm a PC gamer at heart, I can definitely sit down and tell you guys that there is no shame in console gaming. If you want to sit down and buy a console to play video games on, you know, that $300 console, $200 at some points during sales or bundles, buy the whatever software you want, run it, play it, pay for online, all that kind of stuff, you're inclined to do so. It's an easy way to game. You put it into, you plug it into your TV, plug it into a wall, put it in your disc, download your game, play it, and boo how the whole world works. You never have to deal with launchers, any of that kind of crap. You never have to deal with DRM. You don't have to deal with, you know, remembering a billion passwords for a bunch of different services. You get the gist. But at the same time, when you're on the PC side of gaming, there is complete finite control, granular control over everything you do. You get better resolutions, better frame rates, all that kind of stuff. The way that this is designed is reminiscent of PC gaming. I can take the battery out of this and replace it with a better battery later. I can take the motherboard out of it and replace it with a better, efficient motherboard later. I can replace the screen at some point with a higher fidelity screen, higher refresh rate for more uh, incredible, for more for more reactive gaming. I could potentially replace the controls, the shell, everything even on a portable game system. That's the value I feel that you're getting out of it. Because yes, do I have to tinker a little bit more than I have to do? Do I have to do the sweat? shop experience when I'm building this device myself? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, there is something to have learned from this. And at the end of the day, it's kind of like a more prettier Ouya, if that's to be stated, even though that's kind of a heavy term, I would say. For me, I do find value in something like the game shell. I find that, you know, if you want to sit down, build your own system, so you don't have to hack a Vita at a specific firmware. You don't have to have a switch with a specific boot ROM exploit. You don't have to have this, this, and this. You can buy a device, and if you want to emulate games on it, you want to play a lot of homebrew stuff using ARM64 Linux, you can. And in that merit, I find it to be worthwhile. So at this point, what I have to say to you is it becomes more of a do you want to learn something new type of deal? Or do you want a user experience? Do you want a situation where you just buy a product, it ships to you, and that's the whole world? Uh, you could buy one device that you can never get to upgrade, or you could buy this where, yes, you can upgrade it at certain points later on. Revisions of the hardware gets changed. It's an idea that I don't mind. At the core of it, it's pretty much like having a Raspberry Pi in your hand. In fact, it pretty much is except this is Arduino for crying out loud. But that being said, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I think the game shell is an interesting product. So I got to thank, you know, the, the people that have sponsored me. You know, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the lads over at Game Shell if you want. Those guys were awesome. They hooked me up with one of these products, and I found it to be awesome. I like hacking my game consoles, and, uh, you know, if something comes that's open source and already hacked, it pretty much does the job for me. 
but yeah, you know, ne next time, honest advice over here, may maybe develop better control systems. You know, I like L and R buttons, but I, I just don't like the Tetris piece design that it gives me. I don't have to have it that way, but hey man, if I'm gonna play my, if I'm gonna play all my uh, GBA games, my SNES games, I need to have them properly controlled. Just pointing that one out there. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a video focusing on what I believe to be kind of a cool product, dude. It's like a little uh, Game Boy Color, except uh, way overclocked from its time, huh? That being said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it or dislike it. Let me know what you think about it. This is me, Mood, and I am out.